a few weeks ago, indeed it might have been more than a few weeks, I did a video that showed you the basic sort of rearing containers and process of rearing larva through to adults in captivity. But I was asked as a result of that if it was possible to do a video showing the whole process in more detail. And that's going to be the topic of this video. But whether it's just going to be one video or broken into several smaller videos, I'm as yet undecided. It might be the latter. Either way, it will involve what's in here and rearing what's in here and in here and in these through the larval stage through to the pupil stage and hopefully to produce an adult moth in several weeks time and if you want to know what's in here you need to keep watching Right then, so you may well have decided that you want to have a go at rearing some larva of either butterflies or moths and the same general rules of principles apply to rearing. Cleanliness is the most important thing to remember. Hygiene and cleanliness are of paramount importance. Now. I'm just going to show you the way that I rear lava. Other people may well have better methods than I, but I don't rear moths or butterflies for breeding, or not usually anyway. I may well have an attempt with some species at some time in the future, because I used to do it quite a lot when I was young, in my teenage years, and that's quite a few years ago, actually, now. Anyway, the last few years... I've took to rearing lava more, whether it's lava that I've found while I'm out in the field, not knowing exactly what they are, or wanting to know what they are. I've often brought home and reared them through if I couldn't identify them. Ultimately, it's a good way, a fun way of learning and finding out a little bit more about what you're rearing. But in the majority of cases, you will probably purchase your first ever livestock from an entomological dealer or supplier, as I did with what's in here. Now, what's in here is a moth that I've never seen in the flesh, or the wing scale, so to speak. And a number of containers that I have here are all larva, young larva, of the convolvers hawk moth. It's a moth that I've never trapped. Hopefully I will do it sometime, but as I'm fast approaching 60, I can't afford to wait for that once-in-a-lifetime event in Nottinghamshire of a huge hawk moth thundering into the light trap and me not having a heart attack at the same time. So I recently purchased some over or eggs from an entomological supplier down south. They arrived within two days. The eggs hatched all but two, which is quite normal. Anyway, never expect 100% success rate when rearing anything, or even anything hatching at 100% success rate from eggs. Anyway, eggs hatched. Thankfully, they got here just in time as well, because by the end of the very next day, I've got numerous larva to house. Now, most of my larva, for the majority of species, and for a certain length of time, I will house separately in airtight containers such as these. Now, the convolvulus hawk moth larva that is in here is 
in its second instar, so another day or so, and it'll be going through its third into its third instar. They grow at quite a rate. So, although we've missed an instar, I will drop a photo in of what convolvulus hawkmoth larvae look like while still in the egg, and then just out to the eggs just after the first meal. They're now quite a bit bigger, and so after a few days, they require fresh food and clear it out. So that's the next step in rearing. You always need to remember hygiene. Keep them dry, keep the food plant dry wherever possible. If you collect food plants when it's wet, dry it out before giving it your lava. High humidity levels or moisture levels isn't conducive to healthy lava in the majority of circumstances and species. So we'll start work on this one. Right then, I don't think you need to go up at my face while we're doing this because what's in here is the important bit. Now, what's in here of course is a second instar convolvulus hawk moth larva that's in need of cleaning out. Now, to be honest, this food plant that's still in is largely uneaten and the reason for that is that all of this brood because they hatched at the same time from the egg they all hatched on the same evening they're all going through the same skin change but this one appears to have actually completed its next skin change so containers need cleaning out once a day to remove the frass and even for just a couple of minutes sometimes just to open the take the top off the lid open up and let any moisture out and there is some residual moisture in here so what i need to do is use a simple one inch paintbrush and then into a suitable bin if that's a light bush inside Tap my tap, the loose frass out, and then we need to make sure that the sides of our container are clean and dry. So it's a case then of wiping the inside of this container out, like so, with some tissue or kitchen roll is ideal. You'll get through quite a lot of kitchen roll. And ideally use a separate sheet of kitchen roll for every lava if you want to maintain sort of clinical cleanliness. And that's something that you really want to look at. Cleanliness is vital. So with our container now freshly cleaned out, I use these containers. These are about four inches high and about two inches wide or so. And they're great up to a certain size larva and they'll certainly do these individual convolvulus hawk moth larva which is just there look at least another instar or two before becoming far too small for the monster that this larva is going to be now we need to remove as much of this old food plant as possible like so, which leaves us with this bit. I'll turn that round so you can see the lava. Avoid touching the lava wherever possible. You never know what you can carry. We get some fresh food plants. I'll cut the excess sort of top off. And then for this lava, that is plenty. That will last this lava several days arrange the food plant as you can to open the leaves up as much as possible i like to leave a, a clear gap at the bottom now depending on the type of container a lot of people will say to line the bottom of the container with tissue paper and that's no bad thing it helps to with you know with the moisture so that's something you can do i don't bother to be honest but Clean container now, fresh food plant, 
all we need to do is put this lava in with its fresh food plant and just place it in carefully now all the lava that I've had and the two that I've already cleaned out were in the process of changing the larval skins so never touch a larva that is in the process of changing its skin you can still deal with it but don't actually touch the larva don't try and brush it off always just cut the food plant the existing food plant that the larva's on cut that off clean the pot out fresh food in and then put your larva back in now you can tell when a larva is in the process of changing its skin just by looking at the head capsule and it will be seen that the head capsule is sort of over the mouth parts of the larva it's moved considerably more forward and down the larva doesn't suffocate of course because it doesn't breathe out of its mouth and everything will be fine but some larva that are changing skin some of the hairier larva will quite often drop off almost at the point of changing the skin and they seem quite adept at being able to do that and then still change the skin with no real effects but the majority of larva spin a small or thin pad of silk somewhere on the leaf attach themselves to that and mustn't be removed so that's one cleaned out convolvulus hotworth larva we'll do another one i use the these pots these are brilliant these are the most airtight containers that i know of so if we can find where the larva is but then just grab the existing food plant or a bit of the stem which i know the larva isn't on and this larva is in the process of changing its skin if you want to know where it is it's there look so i can grab that leaf there the leaf that it's on snip that bit of leaf off old food plant put away to one side the larva kept there see this larva it's actually an inch long now. This is only second instar. From Volvulus hawk moth are a large larva. If you've read elephant hawk moths, they're about the same size. So it's a case of just brushing this out. Knocking everything carefully into a bin. A paper towel. Keep that up right like that. Just make sure that any residue and residual moisture is gone, which that has. We need some fresh food plant. And don't put don't overcrowd the pot with food plant. Put the food plant in. In the leaves as open as possible and trying to maintain no leaves touching the bottom of the container that way frass from the larva doesn't end up on potentially what is the larva's meal and then you get your larva and just place it in there just being very careful larva in Hop on, job done. So there we are. That's your basic rearing technique and the daily process or every other daily process that you should adhere to when rearing larva. Now, as I've mentioned somewhere in this video, rearing larva on growing food plant is ideal it's the best method possible really it means you have no clean out of the food plant to do as long as that potted food plant is large enough to support the number of larva that you're putting on it remember hot moth larva 
eat a lot and you'd need quite a large potted tree to support a number of most of the hawk moth larva but especially the likes of convolvulus hawk moth and death said hawk moth death said hawk moths have a phenomenal appetite as people are finding as it's becoming easier to rear and obtain in captivity so that is part one of this little video i will do another update in a, a week or so and just to show the progress of these because perhaps within a week they will have outgrown the containers that they're in and i'll have them on potted food plant or more likely food plant that's stood in water either way i'll be kept occupied looking for a food plant but that's one of the important things as well before you do rear any species make sure you have access to the larva's preferred and correct food plant you don't want to be wasting hours on a night time looking for one particular available food plant you need to have that food plant easy to access that's very important it's something that i've done before bought something and thought oh i'm going to keep these where i'm going to get that from so do a bit of preparatory work before read up about your prospective species and the larva and what their care entails and the food that they eat make sure that you can lay your hands on it as easy as possible so a couple of weeks we'll see how large these little chaps have got there won't be one of these i can tell you that <laughs>